Imagine a universe vast and boundless built from the simplest of things, the fundamental building blocks of existence. Consider the raw materials from which everything is formed, the most abundant element of all, permeating every corner of the cosmos, is hydrogen. It's the lightest and most prevalent element in the universe. It's the very stuff of stars, the life-giving fuel of suns, the energy source that powers galaxies. It's also the first atom born in the cataclysmic event of the Big Bang, the genesis of our universe. Here on Earth, hydrogen holds the incredible promise of a clean and sustainable energy future, a future free from the constraints of fossil fuels. But unfortunately, we can't simply pluck it from thin air like picking fruit from a tree. It's not readily available in its pure form. Instead, we need to unlock it, carefully and deliberately, from other molecules where it's tightly bound. And the most common, widely used method for doing this is steam methane reforming, a well-established industrial process. Often abbreviated as SMR, it's a process that currently dominates global hydrogen production, forming the backbone of our hydrogen supply chain. SMR powers refineries, providing the hydrogen needed for crucial refining processes. It also produces fertilizers, specifically ammonia, which is essential for modern agriculture and food production. And looking ahead it could potentially fuel our cities, powering vehicles and providing clean energy for homes and businesses. The process begins by taking methane, primarily sourced from natural gas, and then using intense heat and high-pressure steam, it breaks the methane molecule apart, carefully extracting and harvesting the valuable hydrogen atoms. This industrial process is truly massive in scale, with SMR plants operating worldwide, quietly acting as the hidden engines that drive significant portions of our global economy. But unfortunately, there's a significant catch to this seemingly beneficial process. SMR releases substantial amounts of carbon dioxide, a potent greenhouse gas that contributes to climate change. This critical issue places SMR at a crucial crossroads, a point where we must make important decisions about its future. The central question is, can we continue to harness its considerable benefits without incurring such a significant environmental cost? So, let's dive deep into the very heart of SMR, carefully exploring its intricate chemistry, its overall environmental impact, both positive and negative, and most importantly, the exciting innovations that are actively shaping its future, making it cleaner and more sustainable. Our journey begins with a seemingly simple molecule of methane, and a puff of steam, the starting point of this complex chemical process. Let's shrink down, way down, to the molecular level. We're about to witness a transformation on a scale almost unimaginable, where individual atoms dance and rearrange themselves to form new substances. Prepare to enter a world where the invisible becomes tangible, and the fundamental building blocks of matter are manipulated to create the fuels of tomorrow, and enter the primary reformer, the heart of an SMR plant. This is where the magic truly happens inside this massive industrial vessel. It's a carefully engineered environment designed to facilitate a specific chemical reaction, a reaction that's crucial for producing hydrogen on a large scale. Here, methane from natural gas, the primary source of carbon and steam, the source of oxygen and additional hydrogen, are brought together at incredibly high temperatures, typically between 700 and 1000 degrees Celsius. This extreme heat provides the energy needed to break the strong chemical bonds holding the methane and water molecules together. Inside tubes packed with a nickel catalyst, a substance that speeds up the reaction without being consumed itself, methane and steam molecules collide with the catalyst surface, weakening and ultimately breaking their bonds. This is where the real transformation begins. The carbon atoms, now freed from methane, eagerly join with oxygen atoms from steam to form carbon monoxide, a simple molecule consisting of one carbon and one oxygen atom. Meanwhile, the hydrogen atoms, also liberated from both methane and steam, pair up to create molecular hydrogen, the very fuel we're after. This resulting mixture, hydrogen and carbon monoxide, is called synthesis gas, or more commonly, Syngas. It's a valuable intermediate product with a wide range of applications. Syngas is a crucial building block for the production of a wide array of chemicals, including methanol, a versatile solvent and fuel, and ammonia, a key ingredient in fertilizers. Creating Syngas is the pivotal moment in SMR, we've unlocked hydrogen from methane, effectively converting a readily available resource into a more valuable energy carrier. But the process isn't finished. Our ultimate goal is pure hydrogen, ready for use in fuel cells or other applications. 
Engineers must carefully control temperature, pressure, and the steam-to-methane ratio, constantly adjusting these parameters to maintain optimal reaction conditions. To maximize hydrogen output, ensuring the efficiency and economic viability of the entire process. It's a delicate balancing act, a testament to the power of chemical engineering, harnessing the fundamental laws of chemistry to meet our ever-growing energy needs. The result? A powerful industrial process, a marvel of modern engineering, that transforms simple molecules into essential fuels, driving our economies and powering our lives. But there's still more hydrogen to extract, and the journey to pure hydrogen is far from over. Our journey continues as we take the Syngas, rich in hydrogen and carbon monoxide, to the next stage. To extract more hydrogen, the Syngas enters the water gas shift reactor. Here, carbon monoxide reacts with steam, using iron or copper-based catalysts, to form carbon dioxide and release even more hydrogen. This step boosts hydrogen yield and removes most of the carbon monoxide. Now the gas stream is mostly hydrogen and carbon dioxide. The final challenge separation. The mixture is sent to a purification unit, usually pressure swing, adsorption, PSA. PSA uses special materials to trap everything except hydrogen, letting pure hydrogen pass through. The result is hydrogen of exceptional purity, ready for industrial use. This multi-step process ensures we extract every possible hydrogen atom from methane. But what happens to the carbon dioxide we've created? That's the next challenge. The story of hydrogen isn't complete without confronting its carbon shadow. We've successfully produced pure hydrogen, a versatile energy carrier with the potential to revolutionize various industries. But unfortunately, there's often a hidden cost associated with its production. That cost is carbon dioxide, a significant greenhouse gas. When steam methane reforming, or SMR, is run without implementing carbon capture technologies, the resulting hydrogen is classified and called gray hydrogen. It's the most common form of hydrogen production today. Gray hydrogen is primarily made from fossil fuels, specifically natural gas, and its production unfortunately releases large amounts of CO2 directly into the atmosphere, contributing to global warming. For every single ton of hydrogen produced through this method, a staggering amount up to 12 tons of CO2 are emitted as a byproduct. This significant carbon footprint makes gray hydrogen a major contributor to overall greenhouse gas emissions worldwide. While hydrogen itself, when burned, produces only water vapor and is therefore considered a clean fuel, its production, in the case of gray hydrogen, remains heavily tied to fossil fuels and results in substantial pollution. As the world increasingly seeks decarbonization and a transition to cleaner energy sources, gray hydrogen's considerable environmental cost is coming under increasing scrutiny and facing growing criticism. The challenge before us is clear and undeniable. We urgently need hydrogen to meet our energy demands but we absolutely must find ways to produce it cleanly and sustainably. The conversation surrounding hydrogen has fundamentally shifted. How we choose to make hydrogen now matters perhaps as much as the potential benefits of the hydrogen fuel itself. Gray hydrogen, while still valuable, represents a legacy technology, valuable for its energy potential, but ultimately problematic due to its significant impact on the planet. The next crucial step in this evolution is exploring whether we can effectively capture the carbon emissions before they are released and escape into the atmosphere. This critical question drives the ongoing evolution and innovation in hydrogen production technologies. And this leads us to the concept of blue hydrogen. What if we could make hydrogen without letting carbon dioxide escape? That's the promise of blue hydrogen. The process starts like gray hydrogen methane and steam react to make syngas, then undergo the water gas shift. The difference blue hydrogen facilities use carbon capture, utilization, and storage to trap CO2. After the shift reaction, a solvent absorbs CO2 from the gas stream. The solvent is then heated, releasing pure CO2, which is compressed and transported to deep underground storage. This prevents most emissions from reaching the atmosphere. Blue hydrogen dramatically reduces the carbon footprint, with capture rates up to 95%. It's not perfect some emissions remain, and extra energy is needed but it's a major step forward. Blue hydrogen bridges our fossil fuel past and a low carbon future. The race for low carbon hydrogen is global. The US Gulf Coast is building massive blue hydrogen plants like Air Products Louisiana Project, aiming to capture over 95% of emissions. Europe is investing too. The UK's H2H Saltend and the Netherlands H Vision are pioneering large-scale blue hydrogen. Norway leverages its carbon storage expertise to supply blue hydrogen to Europe. In Asia, 
Japan and South Korea see blue hydrogen as key to energy security and climate goals. The Middle East, led by Saudi Arabia and the UAE, is investing billions in blue ammonia and hydrogen projects. These projects are more than industrial feats. They're bold steps toward a new energy future. Each serves as a proving ground for integrating SMR with carbon capture at scale. Their success will shape the global hydrogen economy. After purification, hydrogen is ready for use. But storage is a challenge. For most industries, hydrogen purity above 99.9% .9 is sufficient. Some applications like fuel cells demand even higher purity, requiring extra purification steps. Once pure, hydrogen's low density makes storage tricky. It can be compressed to high pressures and stored in robust tanks, common for vehicles. Alternatively, it can be cooled to cryogenic temperatures and stored as a liquid, which is denser and useful for space-limited applications. Cryogenic storage requires specialized insulated containers and consumes significant energy. The choice between compressed gas and liquid storage depends on the application, balancing cost, energy, and safety. Efficient storage is key to hydrogen's role in the energy transition. The journey from molecule to market is nearly complete. Blue hydrogen is a step forward, but it's not without controversy. Critics argue it keeps us tied to fossil fuels and risks methane leaks, powerful greenhouse gases. Carbon capture isn't perfect, real-world capture rates can fall short, and the process uses extra energy. Blue hydrogen is low emission, not zero emission. Some fear investing in blue hydrogen could delay the shift to green hydrogen, made from water and renewables. Proponents see blue hydrogen as a necessary bridge. Green hydrogen is still expensive and needs more renewable power. Blue hydrogen can scale up low-carbon hydrogen quickly, decarbonizing industries that can't easily electrify. The debate isn't just blue versus green, it's about timing, scale, and pragmatism. Blue hydrogen helps build the infrastructure and demand for a future hydrogen economy. The challenge use every tool to cut emissions as fast as possible. The story of hydrogen production is still evolving. Engineers are developing new processes for greater efficiency and lower emissions. One breakthrough is autothermal reforming, ATR, which combines steps and uses pure oxygen to generate heat inside the reactor. ATR eliminates the need for external furnaces making carbon capture easier and more efficient. Capture rates can exceed 98%, making ATR ideal for a low-carbon world. Other innovations include advanced catalysts for lower temperatures, membrane reactors that combine reaction and separation, and methane pyrolysis, which produces hydrogen and solid carbon, no CO2. These advances show our quest for clean hydrogen is dynamic and ongoing. The goal power civilization without harming the planet. The future of hydrogen depends on relentless innovation. As we refine our tools, we move closer to a truly sustainable energy system. The journey continues.